Thank you so much, Naledi, for taking the time to do this with us. We really appreciate I love everything about you. You are a hot human. You are gorgeous. And you are funny. My gosh, how are you this morning? <laughs> I'm good. How are you? It's the, the usual fluster morning routine stuff. But I'm great. Yeah. Thank you so much for, for, for having this chat. We've been wanting to chat for a long time. So it's yes. long yeah. overdue. And you're absolutely stunning as well, Michelle. Thanks for the compliment. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So let's just um, get into it. Let's do this. Um, so a lot of people know you as the hot news anchor on TV News, a speaker, conference facilitator, and program director in the speaking circuit. But who is Naledi when the cameras aren't rolling? Um, when the cameras aren't rolling, she is a talkative, goofy, um, I'm just a massive goofball. I, I don't take myself as seriously as, as I do when I am working. Outside of that, I'm just a big clown. I'm the most laid back person you could ever meet. Um, I'm a serious um, uh, family oriented person. I don't have any kids myself. and I don't have a family of my own, but you know, my, my, the most important people in my life are um, my mother, my brother, um, and I'd do anything for them. Um, other than that, I'm actually quite a bit of a loner. I, I'm, I'm happy to lock myself away forever. I'm quite, quite reclusive that way. Um, yeah, that's me. I'm a, I'm a township girl who, who grew up and did, you know, didn't do so badly in getting out of the, the hood. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. That's, that's all it is. I'm, I'm from Alexandra. Um, and, um, yeah, that, that's where I was born. I, I've been working since I was 15 years old. And so all I know how to do is work, really. Sure. Now, Lady, when do you, I know I asked you this already, but um, when do you take the time to, to, to take care of you? I mean, you are like a busy bee, you know, so when do you take time? Um, I, I don't. My week, if I ever, this is what happens to me. If I make plans for a Saturday and I say, oh yeah, it's lunch, Saturday. That's great. Yeah. We're doing it. It's not <laughs> happening. It. It's not going to happen because I'm going to sit on the couch and I'm going to try and recover from just the heavy week that I've had. Um, yeah. And I try to do, I know how cheesy this is, but it actually works. Like you know, that self-care stuff that people talk about, the... You know, sit in the bathtub without yeah. your cell phone and a book and some yeah. music. That stuff actually works uh, to de-stress. Um, I do a lot of that. I like, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm still a girly girl, so I like to like put on a mask and like, yeah. you, know, you know, do my nails and feel pretty. Yeah. And that makes me feel like, yay, I'm refreshed yeah. again. But I, 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 I don't really do much on the weekends. My, my weekends are completely lazy. That's, that's, that's all there is, isn't it? Yeah, true. You gotta uh, you've really got to work. Um, yeah. Who is who is your hero? Who is the person that motivates you to to keep pushing? Sure, it's a tough one. <laughs> I've got so many. Um, my Name hero, them all. Okay, <laughs> I think my my first hero is my my two my first one is my let's say my paternal grandmother Rebecca Moleo. She basically raised me. She was a domestic worker and I lived with her for most all of my childhood and um, in the back rooms, you know, as she was serving people. Yeah. And I know that she, you know, one of the things that she, that, she, that she shoved down my throat every single day was you're never going to clean anyone's house. You're never going to cook anyone's meals and be anyone's meal, anyone's maid. What you are going to do is you're going to be freaking smart and so she you know she had never she'd never been educated herself she'd educated she'd been educated up until grade two um but she taught herself how to read and write she speaks impeccable english legit impeccable english that's because she was obsessed with talk radio and radio south africa and she was just just a very intelligent woman and so she's my hero because she expects so much of me constantly um a second hero is my maternal grandmother who she she runs a shabin, you see. And um, <laughs> yeah, so but she is the, the best story because she had um, a boyfriend 
buy her a beer in mm. Alexander Township. Yeah. And instead of keeping the beer, she sold the beer. And then she bought another one and another <laughs> one and another one. And she says by the end of that day, she was standing in the middle of the road with a case of beers and she was selling it. And that, that business educated all my cousins, all my aunts, all of us, that, that business is still standing today. It's, she is a brave woman who's never actually, I mean, she's never actually worked for anybody. Everything she has, and she's created quite a lot for herself and for her family. All of it has just been by her own blood, sweat and tears and not for anyone else. So that's my, I mean, you can't go wrong when you've got one on that side and one on this side. Oh, that's incredible. You know, they're, they're, they're those type of people. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I would love to meet them. I would love to just peek in their brain and be like, okay, so what now, what next? Because I, I feel like they, they inspired you to yeah. also be where you are right now. And that's, that's incredible, mind blown. Yeah, well, the thing is, if you if you met them, you you wouldn't leave because they talk nonstop. <laughs> That's okay. They can do all the talking. I'll be happy. <laughs> they talk um, nonstop, man. Yeah. Um, all right. So, what is your favorite thing about what you do? Um, I love the constant challenge. Right. Um, mm. no day is ever the same as the next. You. You, you just never know what to expect. And, and everything that's happening in the country is so tragic so much of the time that the challenge is always going to be, you know, how to make people cope with everything that's going on around them while you inform them of just how things are burning around us. Um, and, and what I love the most about it as well is that we're, we're in the business of information. Our job isn't to entertain or to make you laugh or to smile. Our job is to make you aware of what's actually going on around you. I think that it's a very serious, as an honor and as a massive responsibility that without people like us and what we do, people would, wouldn't know how to shape our country moving forward, right? We've got local elections coming up soon. If you don't know that your, um, your ward councillor has stolen this much money, you might just very well keep voting for them and giving them the license to keep doing it. Um, with, without the work that we do, we're, we're not able to get active citizens that actually care about getting the country forward. And I think that's one of my greatest prides is that when, when people see me, hopefully they don't see just, you know, the physical, but they also see someone who, who they can go, yo, thank you. If it wasn't for you, you know, our community wouldn't have, a, um, a bridge or or um, we wouldn't have known that they spent the bridge money on you know a Merc mm -hmm. or um, if it weren't for you we wouldn't have known that um, while millions are being stolen from the Eastern Cape government that uh, a certain school in a village in the Eastern Cape a community has worked hard to build that school for themselves and still receive absolutely no, no money from a government that actually has the resources to do so. Um, I, I pride myself on the fact that part of my job is to inspire the, the ire of South Africans, like angry South Africans. And I mean, the right kind of anger can really drive the country forward because we need to be angry when things aren't working. Um, and that's one of the things I'm, I'm very proud of. I also want us to be proud when things do work, but um, comfortable people don't really achieve much do they? No, not really. No, nothing. Yeah. When you when you mentioned this um, this whole telling people what is going on, people shouldn't be ignorant. Have you? How can I word this? Would have you gotten in trouble for your mouth <laughs> for speaking um, all the all the time? But. Yeah. Luckily, I'm in the business of that. I, I get in trouble all the time. Listen, I had a couple years ago, I had, you know, when those, those the, on Twitter, when you get on Twitter and you say something, and for three days, I got no sleep sure. because Black Twitter was on me, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. because sometimes you, you share an opinion and it's not a popular opinion and you're going to get, you're going to get, you're going to get in trouble for it. But the, the thing is, is, if we all think the same and we're all sheep, then what's, 
What's yeah. the point, guys? That's boring, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I disagree with people a lot. You, you, I, I try, part of the thing that gets me in trouble is I try as much as possible to, to look at issues from my perspective. And my perspective is that of a black female coming from the township who knows what it's like to be poor and disenfranchised. Mm-hmm. So when I tell a story quite often, I try and worry about the little girl who is like me or the young teenage girl who is like me, who, who had the same problems I did when I was a, a, a disadvantaged teenage girl. Now, part of the problem with that is that then I get seen as, oh no, you're pushing an agenda, which isn't always the case. It isn't the case, but I, for me, I push for representation. I can't, I can't afford to be a blank slate. There's too much work to do for me to be a blank slate, like a blank canvas, yes. right? I need an opinion. I need a position so that I know what I'm driving for and what I'm working towards. And so that gets me in trouble all the time. But um, you've you've got to fight for your yeah. for what you you know for what you stand for. That's otherwise nothing gets done. I mean, this is and this is essentially what I was saying was that like um, one of the most beautiful things about South Africa is that we are allowed and we were we're we're a country that's not. It's not uncomfortable with having differing opinions. And that's why, unlike the US, where they are so polarized, we're comfortable with talking about things that we don't agree on and, and we engage beautifully as a country. We're the kind of country that's not afraid to disagree over stuff. And it's it's cool, you know? People disagree with you today, they hate you for a couple hours and then they move on. Life goes on. Up to the next one. <laughs> Um, so the past year has been chaotic like it's been people have been depressed people have been yo so many deaths and I'm not even talking about COVID-19 deaths like people have just taken their lives because people just can't do it anymore like it's been stressful yeah how has how has the past year changed your thinking or changed the way you do things um I'm learning to be a little bit more grateful than I was before. Um, I think that prior to COVID-19, there was a lot of things that I didn't, didn't quite appreciate about my life, just how healthy I am, how fortunate I am to have a career that actually functions, um, to live in areas where social distancing isn't, isn't as painful as it is for other people in the country. Um, just for me, like it's 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 taught me that you know one of the things that someone said at the beginning of this of the pandemic at the beginning of the pandemic someone said the trick with twenty twenty is not going to be just to 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 want to thrive the trick with twenty twenty is going to be fighting to stay alive that is having your business stay alive your career stay alive having your actual life um, and. I think what we've what we've done is we've we've become a culture that so quickly always wants like the next best thing. Where's the greener pasture? Where's the where's the next level that I'm going to? And we don't actually take the time to appreciate what we do have at that moment. Um, and that's what COVID nineteen has taught me. It's taught me to shut up and actually just be a little bit more grateful, honestly, um, and just take care of the people that matter the most in my life. Mm. Yeah. If you could change anything that happened last year, what would it be? Well taking um, COVID-19 out of the picture, what would you change about what happened last year in your life, personally or in your um, career? I don't think, hold on, I've got to think about that one. What would I change about last year? I would change maybe the, I'd want to change the anxiety and the depression that came with, with um, being under lockdown and not being able to go anywhere. I mean, remember there was a point where we were so locked in. We, I mean, people were baking because, you know, you couldn't get takeaways and stuff. And people were doing all sorts of crazy things. It was ridiculous. Yeah. But I think I'd, 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 I'd probably get rid of that anxiety and depression and, the, and the, the mental pressure of it all and just live in it. Because for once in my life, I had nowhere to go, which is very rare for me. So I should have just enjoyed that. <laughs> Other than that, I don't think I'd, I'd I mean, besides from the fact that so many people died and so many jobs were lost, personally, I wouldn't change anything because I think um, while COVID-19 was a complete disaster, it also offered a lot of opportunity if you were really, really watching very closely, right? Um, 
the smartest people uh, or, or some people learned to start trading um, mm-hmm. and, and really started learning about the markets um, mm-hmm. in 2020. I'm certainly one of them. Um, and, you know, you, you started understanding just how business really works and, and what happens with business in times of crisis and where the opportunities are in business in times of crisis. So I'm very proud of that. Um, I, I think that while it, it has decimated our economy and so many economies, it's also, to some extent, been a great equalizer where areas that were previously um, very elitist areas and inaccessible had to lower their expectations a little bit and allow for other entrants into the market because you can't sustain everything on your own. The prices have to come down. People need to access certain things. And to some extent, it's also been an equalizer. I've said that to my friends a few times, that 2020 and COVID-19 is one of the most, the most tragic thing that's happened to humanity in 100 years, obviously, well, aside from war and all of that. But it also has been the great equalizer in many instances. Sure. I had a question now. <laughs> it's gone. Um, all right. I'm just gonna... That happens all the time. That happens really? to me all the time. <laughs> and then what I do is I go, then I go, yeah, those are very interesting insights. Truly, truly, because I'm buying myself time. I go, yeah. and, I, and I do appreciate um, what you said about it being the great equalized because, you know, it's some of these things that we don't think all I'm doing really is going oh, my yes. I was trying to remember no I'm like Michelle come on come on don't say you forgot your question <laughs> um <laughs> all right so um what are your top three secrets to success um your spirituality matters you're not going to be successful if you have no spirituality. And by that, I don't mean, you know, you've got to be religious, which is fine as well. But um, you've got to manifest. You've got to believe the things um, that the universe or that your ancestors or that God wants good things for you. You have to believe it. Um, you, you've got to be comfortable with your spirituality as well. You, That's for me, number one. you First things first, to start with the spiritual. Once you've got that, the other stuff really comes together. Um, the second thing is don't compare yourself with anybody in your in your work. As long as you're doing the best that you can and you've got to, you've set yourself a goal, don't look left and right at what other people are doing. They're just going to trip you up. It's a waste of time. It's a waste of energy. It's just going to bring your self-esteem down. Focus on what you're doing. Don't worry about anybody else. It'll drive you crazy. Um, and the third one is Oh, gosh, wait. I'd say the third one is just do the work, man, you know? Yeah. And, oh, there's a, a friend of mine likes to call me Stakhanov. Um, <laughs> Stakhanov was a Russian um, man, essentially, mm-hmm. and he, he inspired what was called the Stakhanovite movement, which was a movement of workers who essentially began a union called the Stakhanovites, and all they did was work, right? So their their philosophy was work hard, but do more than is expected of you, right? So you're expected to deliver 10 eggs, give them 15. Um, Because then who's going to compete with you? Yeah. Yeah. So So that's the third one is work hard, do more than is expected of you when you you are being given a goal. That's amazing. Spirituality, focus on you and not the other person and do what do more. Do more than what's expected. Oh. I, need, I, needed, I needed that. Thank you. I think that was personally just for me. Thank you very much. Everyone else was listening, because that was for me. Um, how do you stay disciplined to show up? So it could be to show up for work, for the gym, for that glass of wine, for anything. Oh, how do I stay disciplined to show up? I just try and if, if I have a routine, I'm fine. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't, I've never really struggled so much with discipline. Not, not really, not where, not where, I value my work too much. Do you know what I mean? Like if I take a day off from work, all I'm doing is I'm texting them at work and asking them how things are going and if they've covered the story and if they've spoken to this person and sending them the number and, oh, here's that guy from the IFP and give the even on my day off. Um, 
but also because I've been working for so long. I've been working since I was 15. I've been in media for a very long time. So, yeah, I don't, I, I, as, long as, I, as, long, as long as it's work, I'm there usually. It's the social stuff that I have no discipline with. It's mm. that I, I'm stuck, I suck with that stuff. I know, um, girl. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, my last question is, if you were a crayon, what color would you be? And Red. Oh, of course. Right? Red. Why? <laughs> red is the color of power. My bookshelf is red. My car is red. My lips are red. Red, darling. Red is the color <laughs> of power. Um, you, it's, you walk in in a red dress and everybody stops and stares. Red, red, red. <laughs> And you look hot in red. You're yes. a gorgeous, hot, red yes. human. <laughs> Remember the, the Matrix? There was a scene in the Matrix where um, Morpheus is walking uh, Neo through the Matrix and there's that woman with the red dress and, and he, you know, Neo then freezes and loses focus. And that's what red does. Yeah. Red is the color of power. You want to stand out always red. Yeah. And when did you last watch this movie, The Matrix? How do you remember that though? I don't even remember it. Eight, eight, I don't know, like I don't know, eight years ago, but I'd never forget that scene. This is my thing about red, you see? Yeah. I'll never forget that scene. Makes sense. I love it. Um, Naledi, thank you so much for this. I had so much fun. I I tried not to laugh so loudly because <laughs> I'm <a> very ugly <laughs> laugh. <laughs> it's like <laughs> it's it's about to come out now. <laughs> this is cool, yeah. dude. This was so much fun. Thank this you so later. much for this. I cannot Thank wait to, to do another one. And the next time we we both will be very ready. I know you are ready, but the first, yeah, 10 seconds, <laughs> not so much. <laughs> You're amazing. Thank you for this, Nadine. Thank <laughs> you.